You know, I've heard some people say that hell is not real. That when Jesus spoke about hell, he only spoke metaphorically. That it, there is no such place called hell. You know, and some Christians actually believe that when you die, and if you did not give your life to Jesus, you do not go to a place called hell. Yes, you also do not go to heaven with God, but you just cease to exist. Meaning there's no such place of a torment called hell. And in fact, some other people believe that hell is already here on earth. Meaning after we die and everything is over in this world, we will all be saved and we will all live with God in heaven. So th these are just opinions and the ideas that people bring when we're talking about hell. But I want us to talk about this subject because Jesus spoke more about hell than anybody else in the Bible. And if Jesus spoke about hell more than anybody else, uh, it, it, it means this is a, an important subject that we all have to look at. And I don't want you to take my opinion for it. I don't want you to take the opinion of another person, but I want us to look into the Bible what hell really is. So what is hell? You know, I want to start by saying this. Hell is not a physical place. Hell is not a physical place. But just because hell is not a physical place, meaning you cannot locate it on a map. You cannot say, oh, this country here, next to it there is hell. No, you cannot locate it on a map. But just because it is not a physical place doesn't mean that it is not a real place. Why am I saying that? Because sometimes we tend to believe that if you cannot see something, if you cannot touch something, if you cannot feel something, maybe that thing is not real. But you have to understand that all we see is not all there is. And one thing, again, that you have to understand is that we are spirit beings. And the concept of hell doesn't apply to our human bodies, but it applies to our spirits. And oftentimes, the Bible uses human terms to describe spiritual realities. And hell is that spiritual reality that the Bible uses to describe it that the Bible uses human terms to describe it. So whenever you look at hell, you have to first understand and put in your mind that this is talking about a spiritual reality. And the Bible describes actually hell as a place of or a state of separation from God, eternal separation from God. You know, when hell is mentioned, it's a place of eternal separation from God. Those who have rejected the gift of his salvation, they go to hell. It's a place of eternal separation from God. But I want you to understand here that there are four different words in the Bible that are used for hell. One in Hebrew and three in Greek. And I want us to quickly a little bit look at those words because I believe that understanding the use of these, these words is actually going to help you. So I want us to have a look at these four different words. The first one that I want you to understand is the word Shehal. And that word is written, spelled S-H-E-O-L, Shehal. And I want you to understand that Shehal is actually used to describe the underworld, meaning the world of the dead. The righteous one, the wicked one, those who believe or those who don't believe, this is a general, most of the time, is a general description of the dead. It's actually the realm of the dead, the world where dead people go to. So sometimes when the Bible mentioned hell, it uses the word Sheol to show that it is the realm of dead people. But most of the time, that word is also used, you know, for torment and for wicked people, especially, and most of the time, to describe that the wicked people are going into that realm of dead people, 
to be tormented or to be tortured. And you're actually going to find that word in Psalm chapter 9, verse 17, where the Bible says, The wicked shall be turned into hell. And that word hell there is Sheol. And all the nations that forget God. Psalm 9, verse 17. You see here, the word Sheol means hell for the wicked people. This is the Bible. I first want you to understand that I'm not using my opinion. I'm using the Bible. This is the Bible. It is using the word Sheol here to show that the wicked will go into that realm of the dead. But it is describing a specific, um, a specific criteria or characteristic of that word hell. It's only reserved for the wicked people. But in its globality or generality, the word Sheol means the world of the dead, the realm of the dead or the underworld where dead people go to. But then there's a second word, but this time it's in Greek. It is the word Hades. H-A-D-E-S. That word is actually the same word as Sheol. But Sheol is just in Hebrew and Hades is just in uh, Greek. It actually also means the world of dead people. But something specific with Hades is that it is described specifically only for the wicked people. And it always describes a place of torment and torture. Again, this is the Bible. This word, whenever it is mentioned, Jesus used this word, this, uh, this word when he was talking about hell. And you will find this in Luke chapter 16, verse 23. This is the parable of the rich man and the poor Lazarus. After they both die, the poor Lazarus is dead and he finds himself in the bosom of Abraham. And then the rich man is also dead, but he was a wicked one. He didn't believe he wasn't righteous. So he goes to Hades, he goes to hell. And then in verse 23 of Luke 16, the Bible says, And in Hades, in hell, being in torment, I want you to say this, being in torment, he was in hell, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes. And so Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. Wow, I want you to see this. The Bible says that this man was in Hades, was in the realm of the dead, but specifically in the place for wicked people. And the Bible says that he was in torment. So this description of hell was not something that was neutral. You just find yourself, you're being punished or you're just chilling. No, he was being tormented. This man was being tormented in hell so it wasn't a nice place and jesus was showing it was describing it as a real place remember i said it is not a physical place but just because it is not physical doesn't mean that it is not real and then there's a third word and that third word is gehenna gehenna g-e-h-e-n-n-a Gehenna. You know, Gehenna was used actually to describe a certain valley that was in Jerusalem, in, in fact, outside of Jerusalem. And in that valley, they used to burn garbage and the bodies of criminals. So it was a real place that, was, that existed outside of Jerusalem, where people would burn garbage and the bodies of criminals. And it is actually said that the fire in Gehenna was burning constantly and it couldn't be, you know, quenched somehow. It couldn't be quenched, so it was burning. Whenever a criminal, a criminal was killed or they wanted to burn some garbage, they would just throw it or throw those bodies in Gehenna. And Jesus comes. Jesus is now using that term, Gehenna, to describe what hell is like. And remember what I said in the beginning, that the Bible uses human terms to describe spiritual reality. 
Jesus was looking. He was literally trying to tell them, what can I use in this world that can describe what hell is like? And therefore, he uses the term Gehenna, a certain valley where the fire was unquenchable, where they will burn the body of criminal and garbage. And Jesus uses that term to liken it with hell. In the book of Mark chapter 9 verse 47, Jesus says, And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. And that word hell there is Gehenna. Jesus is showing here again that hell is a real place and it is he's using a human term, a common term that Jewish people at that time could identify. When he say Gehenna, they could see, they could say, oh, so hell is like Gehenna, but now in the spiritual world. Does that mean that hell is a physical place? No. But does that mean that hell is a real place? Yes. Yes. And the last word, um, the fourth word that I want you to get here is Tartarus. T-A-R-T-A-R-U-S. Tartarus. In fact, this word Tartarus is only mentioned once in the Bible. And this is not the typical hell that we use. This is a special place, a lower, very lower place in Hades where fallen angels, wicked angels are bound. Wicked angels, fallen angels, wicked ones. In fact, God will not allow them to come into this world and to operate. They are so wicked. They are kept there. They are actually kept there for the judgment day. They will be released for judgment day. Tartarus is actually the word hell in English, but to use a specific definition, a specific place, Tartarus. You will find this in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. The Bible says, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, that word used there is Tartarus, and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. Wow. That's the only time that that Greek word Tartarus is used. The only time. It is a specific place where fallen angels are kept, but where it is in hell. It is spiritual place. And as I said, just because it is a physic, it is not a physical place doesn't mean that it is not a real place. And Jesus described hell in different type of ways. I want you to understand, this is not a man-made thing or something ju just someone came in, came out with. No, this was Jesus. Jesus used it. And there are different type of ways that Jesus described hell. One type is that he said that it was a fire that cannot be quenched. You will find this in Mark chapter 9 verse 43. Jesus said that hell is a place of unquenchable fire, meaning it is not some temporary place. No, it is a place where the fire keeps on burning. You will find this also in Revelation chapter 20 verse 14 to verse 15, where the Bible says that Hades and uh, the realm of the dead and death was cast into the lake of fire. That lake of fire cannot be quenched. So when Jesus described hell, he described it as a place of unquenchable fire, eternal torment. This is the one thing that Jesus described it with. But another place, he described it as a place of darkness, of weeping and gnashing of teeth, meaning it is a place of complete and total suffering my friends it is a place of suffering it is a place of suffering you'll find it in matthew chapter 8 verse 12 it is a place of complete suffering brothers and sisters and you have to understand that so don't buy into when people say that uh 
it is not a real place. But a third thing before we finish that I want you to understand that hell is a place where you are conscious that you are being tormented and tortured. It is not a place where you just disappear and cease to exist. No, there is still consciousness when you are suffering because only your body ceases to exist in this world. But your spirit, your soul continues to live on. You are a spirit being, so you are eternal. You will be in eternity. But the question is, where will you spend your eternity? That is the real question here. Where you will spend your eternity? It is not if you will be in eternity. You will. Because you are a spirit being. So we, you will keep on living on. But the question is, where? Where? This is something that we need to understand. And I want to highlight one danger here. There is a very big danger when we try to water down some explicit realities in the Bible, especially the reality of hell. Sometimes we're trying to water down this reality of hell and telling people that hell is not real, hell doesn't exist, just because we want to satisfy the human mind. Just because something doesn't appeal to your logic doesn't mean that that thing is not real. And in fact, if you remove the reality of hell, you are actually removing the urgency of repentance. The urgency of understanding why Jesus died. Because here is the question. If hell is not real, why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus come into this world to die for you? In fact, you cannot be a Christian if you do not believe that Jesus died for you, died for your sin. But now, if you believe that Jesus died for your sin, how can you say that hell is not real? If hell is not real, if hell does not exist, why did he die for your sins? Why? There is a danger with trying to soften or water down the realities of the Bible. It removes the urgency of repentance. If you are one of those people who have bought into the realities that hell does not exist, hey, listen to me. Just because you don't believe that it exists doesn't mean that it doesn't exist actually. It's like me saying, I don't believe electricity is real. And then I touch electricity. Oh my friend, I will die. The Bible talks about hell. The Bible shows that it is a real place, not a physical one. A real place. Your body is just a house where you are living in. But you are not your body. You are a spirit being. You are a soul. You live in that body. And when you die, you will go to eternity. But where are you going to spend your eternity? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15 that today when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. If you're watching this video and you've never given your life to Jesus, I will invite you to do that. I hope this episode blessed you. It surely did bless me. Um, I love talking about those kind of subjects. You know, next time we're going to speak about hell and God's love. You know, if hell exists, how does it fit with the love of God? How can you say that God is love and still he created hell? You know, this is what we're going to speak about in our next episode. And I hope you can share this word with some people around you. Don't forget to like, to subscribe as well and to comment and to share again. Um, with people but until then i pray god's blessing over you and i love you so much and i will see you bye bye